Functions are one of the building blocks of JavaScript. A function is a reusable block of code that performs a specific task. They are used to avoid repetition and to make code more organized and readable. To define a function, we use the keyword function followed by the name of the function. I'll call this function say hello and add parentheses right after. Finally, we'll add curly braces after this where all our functions logic is going to go. So inside these curly braces, I'm going to add a console log saying hello world. Now, if I save my file, we see nothing in the console. This is because we have just defined a function. In order to execute the code inside of this function, we have to call this function. To call a function, we simply use the function name. So I can say, say hello, followed by parentheses. It's important to add parentheses because that's what tells JavaScript that you're trying to call this function. If I now save my file, we'll see hello world in the console. And as I said before, functions are reusable blocks of code, which means we can call this function multiple times without having to write all the logic inside of it multiple times. You can see how powerful this can get with multiple lines of code inside of a function. That basically means you don't have to keep rewriting the same thing over and over again. This in itself may seem very powerful to you, but where functions really shine is when you want to pass in custom values to it. Let's say we have a function called add to numbers and let's try calling it. Of course, nothing happens right now because we have no code inside the curly braces. However, let's say we pass in two numbers, five and 10, when we're calling the function. It would be great if this function could somehow have access to these two numbers that we just passed in. And that's where functions parameters come in. Function parameters allow us to pass in values to a function just like this and use those values inside the function's code block. To get access to these values that we just passed in, we simply define them in the function parentheses in the same order that we passed them down here. So I'll define the first value that is passed in as num1 and the second value that is passed in as num2. We can now go ahead and console log num1 plus num2. If I save my file, I'll get 15 in the console. So let me explain this in more detail with the correct terminology. We first define a function called add two numbers and then we define two parameters inside this function parentheses. When you create these variables inside parentheses, they're called parameters. Anyway, we then take these parameters and then add them together and then console log them. Outside of this function, when we're going to call it, we pass in two values. When passing in values to a function that has already been defined, we call these values arguments. So in this case, five is an argument in place for num1, and 10 is an argument in place for num2. Make sure you know the difference between parameters and arguments as they are two different things. Now let's take a look at how to return values from a function. I'll first show you an example of how values are returned from functions. I'll use the previous math function as my example here from the previous video. Let's say I wanted to define a variable called random number and I give it a value of math.random. And of course, make sure you call it by using the parentheses. If I console log random number, I'll get, well, a random number. Every time I save this file, I get a new random number. The logic behind this is the math.random function is returning a value, which if I try to assign it to a variable, it takes that returned value from the function and actually sets it as the value of that variable. If that sounds confusing to you, don't worry. We're about to put that into code. I'm going to create a function with the same name as the last one called add two numbers. And I'm going to have two parameters called num1 and num2. Inside the function curly braces, I can say return num1 plus num2. This function now returns a value. This value is the sum of num1 and num2. If I console log add two numbers and I pass in five and 10 as the arguments, I'll get 15 in the console. So whatever is returned from inside this function automatically becomes what is passed into this console log statement. We can also use this return value to create variables. So I can define a variable called sum one and set it to add two numbers and pass in two and four as arguments. 
I can also define another variable called sum2 and I'll set it to add two numbers again and I'll pass in five and six as arguments this time. If I console log both of them, I'll get six and 11 respectively in the console. This is because the first function add two numbers takes in two and four as arguments and it returns the sum of those two numbers. The function does the same thing down here, but for five and six.